Okay, well I'm back at it and I found one more error on the parts of the previous uh, builder and basically I was getting ready to move forward into the next stage of installing the lifters and the cam and the cam bearings have to be in a specific way. Um, there's a flange bearing which you really can't mess up that goes to the front of the engine but then the middle and rear bearings uh, need to be different. There's a narrower bearing and a wider bearing. The narrow bearing needs to go to the rear of the engine and the larger bearing, wider bearing needs to go to the middle of the engine. And on this case here, the narrow, bear, the narrow bearing is correct in the rear of the housing, but I come over here and the middle ones are swapped where the narrow bearing is in the middle and the wide bearing is in the rear of the casing and that wide bearing is blocking a small oil passage which is I believe the only way that that rear bearing gets oil from this side of the case. I don't believe that yeah that doesn't pass through there so there's case holes that line up with all the bearings and that's what caught my eye was the rear one didn't have a case hole well if I guessing either it's blocked by this wider bearing or it, let's see what happens here yeah there's there's no case hole in that passage behind the bearing is the way that this bearing gets its um, oil so glad I caught that because that rear bearing would have failed prematurely so let's see I'll be careful getting these out I don't think oh man Oh, that's easy enough. All right, so a little, wipe off these journals and swap them. I mean, luckily this engine was never assembled to the point where the cases were torqued down, or else I would consider getting. Just replacing these bearings so just clear the faces Just for giggles. Uh, let's see. 3.38 and. Three point three. Okay. And. That looks good. Now I can uh, move on to the next part. Looks like I can finally start assembling this. Uh, lower part of the motor here so let's get to it. I think first thing we got to do is grease up the lifters liberally. Here's where we get filthy. Put them each in their homes. Yes, if you're going to get in, you just get in and get it done. All right, while I'm at it, let's 
let's uh, get a little extra on that center main bearing. And each of the three cam bearings. extra on that one that doesn't have direct oil passage and relying on that that little valley all right now the fun of aligning that crankshaft again Rear bearings seated. What about this one. That one's way off. Okay. Two and see this one. All right. Three bearings seated. Okay. Now let's bring the cam timing marks. I get them up in about this position here. Cam shield. That's what came with the kit, and that's what they want on the faces of the lifters. And I also know I'm supposed to try and keep any other lubricants off of there. So let's wipe those faces so this sticks good. Okay. That's good stuff. So there's how I have uh, greased the cam lobes. I just covered the complete tops. I know the cam really runs down the center, but I don't want to take any chances. So give you a little better view of that uh, clearance. This, uh, this rear cam bearing still kind of blocks that valley. But uh, it was designed to work that way, so that's the way we're going to leave it. All right, so I think what I'm supposed to do here is to measure the end play and the crankshaft. So in order to do that, uh, I'll turn it around a little bit here. Ooh, 
That's a good magnet. Okay. So we've got the flywheel and this only goes on one way. So let's see here. Now two of these are supposed to be closer together than the others. Those are at the top. I think they're facing me. Alright. It uses a wavy style washer as a lock washer. And let's see. Cinch that down nice and tight, and there's a little bit of little bit of play there, and I gotta measure that play. Two biggest ones. 32 and 30. Let's see if we got 62. Ooh. 62 with a little drag. Let's see. Let's throw another thousandth in there and see what happens. Or one and a half though doesn't want to go. Alright, got lucky. 60, 62 thousandths. And we're shooting for a play of three thousandths to six thousandths. So we take six off of 62 and we end up with 56 thousandths. These are the spacers, and we got some different thicknesses here. 32, when I say 56, so we want at least 56. Thirty-six, thirty-six, thirty-four. I think I'm going to use thirty-four. Thirty-four and twenty-four is fifty-eight. Let me. Make sure there's no extra surface on there. Thirty-four, fifty-eight. So, fifty-eight obviously goes in well, and sixty. So, we're gonna try and put five in there with it. So, fifty-eight and five is sixty-three. Let's see what we can get. All right. Somebody did math wrong. I'm going to double check the tools. Oh, so what it says is 32s. Really 31. And what is 30 is 29. So these seem to be a thousandths undersized. The two of these together have drag 61. Uh -huh. 
That's only 23. That says 20. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, well, 3, 4. I'm just going to have to measure them. Okay. I don't know what the numbers on here signify, but they're definitely not the measurements for the thickness. Um, they are incremental. They do step up, but um, I have gotten to the point where I'm getting, I don't know if you can read that, 58 and a half thousandths. We were at 62 thousandths, so that leaves three and a half thousandths. And when I take this and slide it down, well, I slide the, I have a three thousandths feeler gauge, which is too flexible to be forced, so I'll set that down in first. Okay, I have the rings, five of them that total uh, about 58 and a half thousandths inch and I can get the three thousandths feeler gauge in there but in order to get the four I have to really force it so this is what we're going to go with. These because I these won't be used until final assembly. I'm just going to twist tie the group together that I'm using. Take the spares, extras, and put them back in the bag for later use. All right. Okay, so at this point, I still got okay. I I'll turn it around. I don't think you'll be able to see, but these two have the cam timing marks on it. These two lobes and. going again. Okay. Here's our timing mark on our cam. Just a little. All right, that looks really good. Not sure if this shows up good, but you can see the cam timing mark between the two timing marks on the crankshaft gear. So on to the next step. All right, I think the next step is to focus, but um, just gonna double check the casing Make sure I got nice clean surfaces to uh, for the gasket sealer to work well on. Okay. 
Uh, the six O-rings have already been dropped along the main stud shafts. That stuff's messy. I'm going to try and be smart for once. The cam plug goes with the flat side facing away from the motor into the recess in the rear of the housing case. And work on that first. Oh yeah, good stuff. Obviously trying not to get that anywhere it doesn't belong. Start working my way around the perimeter, and I've got to be conscious of anywhere that there's uh, passages for oil to feed back into the crankcase. So. I'm going to apply this liberally but not excessively on a smooth even coat along all mating surfaces. All right, let's speed this up.
part. Okay, I think I've got good uniform consistency. There's this little spot in here I couldn't quite reach without knowing I was gonna get some on that uh, surface. So I'll show you how I dealt with that in a few minutes, but um, pretty even coat all the way around. And I'm gonna go over to the back. Uh, the other half of the case here and this is the area that I missed on the first half so all the bases should be covered I just went back and got the other side of the cam plug and the other side of the cam plug valley there. So everything should be good. Okay. One more tool. I'm back. I went and got some uh, lifter retaining clips that are going to very nicely Okay, the lifter should not fall out now while I attempt a gasket sealer on that rod. And touch up the spot where it hit. Okay. And away we go.
seems to be a tiny little gap on this side that I certainly don't want to force. Uh, that's the main side, not the cam side. Yeah, no, she's good. All right. All right, washers under each lock nut on the six main studs. All right, so the center studs need to be tightened first and then I believe um, torque the center then the front and then the rear I'm not torquing right now I'm just seating them Yeah, without applying any torque, everything's seated up nicely, so. Okay. Um, Just looking for the torque settings. Okay. I'll start with 15 foot pounds.
Next, onto 25 foot pounds, and in bold letters, do not exceed 25 foot pounds. Double, triple check. Always double check. Okay. Main studs secured. Next is the perimeters. I need the Permatex under those cam washers. I almost forgot that. That's what help. It's helpful about like watching uh, the AeroV assembly video a few times, reading your book uh, a couple times, and then again at least before you're ready to assemble, and then. Uh, as you start to visualize specific bolts, there's a fair chance you're going to remember something from the book or the videos about uh, that would pertain to that particular area. So I forgot about that till I looked at those, and then it was perfectly clear. Okay, so the cam nuts go to 10 pounds, and everything else goes to 13 pounds. I know that extensions are a no-no when it comes to torque, but with these low torque settings, I'm not getting any flexor twists, so I'm not too concerned.
two more to do with the case flipped over or on its side, but let's just double check that we we still have easy rotation of the crank. Life's good. Lifter locks can come out. And for the most part, that's pretty darn close to uh, being done. Everything's sealed up, made it nice, a little tiny bit of squeeze out around every bit of the perimeter I can see from here. I haven't looked at the other side yet, but uh, do these last two and be done. In the picture, it looks like the bolt heads this way. Oop. A little masking from painting. It's going to be a 13 millimeter. Okay, I've got a short block, so that's as far as I can go for now. I have some piston ring tools coming in, and uh, those won't be here till later in the week. So I hope you enjoyed. Remember, if you like what I'm doing here, and hit the share button, subscribe buttons, bell buttons, all that other stuff. I'm not, you know, really, really, really familiar with a lot of it yet, but everybody else says it, so. Yeah, if you like what I'm doing, uh, follow along and tell your friends. Thank you.